Welcome to the Forbes Factor, featuring celebrity TV host, million dollar entrepreneur and renowned health and fitness superstar, Forbes Riley. A familiar face from TV, as well as one of today's most sought after female motivational speakers today. You'll connect with some of the top experts in health and fitness, business and personal development, as well as some surprise celebrities, all sharing their insight, tips and tricks to finding true happiness. Now, here's your host, Forbes Riley. Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to the Forbes Factor. It is my great, great pleasure. Today's show could be my favorite of the entire year. So many of you know that I started my career as an actress. Uh, I did start in high school, didn't do so great in high school, did much better in college, but I did move to New York and landed the lead in my very first feature film called Splatter University. I know where the, color, where the, uh, where the school colors are blood red and ended up working on Broadway with Christopher Reeve. I've done, I don't know, 100 movies and television series and lots of stage. And most of you only know me though for the 194 infomercials that I've hosted. Well, I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit more than just an infomercial late night talk show host. I'm at my heart an actress. I love acting. I love all that we've had a chance to do in my career. And today is a very special day. Last, uh, I guess it was around this time last year, I got asked to go to Kansas City with the most amazing cast and crew to be in a romantic comedy called Farm to Fork to Love. In the middle of the pandemic, these brave actors, we took our masks off, we hugged each other, and we made a feature film that this week, guys, this week is on Amazon Prime. Farm to Fork to Love, I invite you to come take a look at it. But right now, I'm gonna invite the entire, well, actually, I'm gonna start with Megan. So Megan was the first actress that I met on set. She is delightful, amazing, and if I were just 40 years younger, <laughs> I could be your sister. Megan, turn your camera on and come say hi to everybody. I'm so excited by this young woman who's also a blogger and a real foodie. Hello, hello, my girl. Hey, hey, it's so great to be here and see you. Oh. I, I know, I'm just like looking at you going, oh, I miss you. Yeah, I can't believe it was a year ago. Is that just crazy? All right. So before I'm going to introduce everybody, I want to going to give you a minute or two on your own. Tell us who you are and what you're up to before I introduce everybody. All right. I'm Megan Kaiser. I'm an actress here in Atlanta. I'm also a writer. I wrote a book on all the ways to travel for free. It's called Everywhere for Nothing, Free Travel for the Modern Nomad. Um, I'm the lady, the lady in question in the movie From Farm to Fork to Love. And felt so lucky to be in that movie, not only because the cast is so fun, but also the crew is the best I've ever worked with. And um, we also did another movie that's coming out December 23rd on Lifetime called Rebuilding a Dream Christmas. Now, I think you shot that in my hometown. Were you in Tampa when you shot that or St. Pete? Yes. Also Kansas City in, in July, in summer, and it's set in the winter. So we were, hot, we were hot. We were sweating in those high quality winter clothes. Well, I had such a treat meeting. I'm gonna bring everybody on one at a time. Scott Cooper, all the way from South Africa. The brightest blue eyes I've ever seen next to my son. Uh, I still have memories of us sitting outside some pumpkin area looking at cows. <laughs> Scott, how are you doing? Hey Forbes, hey everyone. How you doing? All right, so tell us who you are and what you're up to. Uh, my name is Scott Cooper. I'm from South Africa, from Cape Town, but I live in Burbank, Los Angeles now. Uh, yeah, I've been living here about a few, a few years. I love America. Obsessed with America, actually. I love it so much. And I think that had to do with me growing up watching American movies and shows. So I have a love affair with America and I just am so happy to be, to be living here. Um, I've got a couple of films coming out, I think, early next year. They're in post-production. Uh, besides our wonderful film. Uh, one's called River of Ghosts. The other one's called Transubstantiation. They are drama, thrillers. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be interesting. Um, but it was just wonderful working on this film. It was just great to be in, in uh, Kansas City. It was a really incredible experience just working. The, the crew was just wonderful. And, and it was it was just an amazing, amazing experience. And it was a year ago. Yeah, exactly a year ago, this week, a year ago. And it was, uh, we got to stay in the hotel. We got to film in the hotel. And it was just, it was just so much fun. Everyone was just really, really great. I haven't spoken or seen either one of you since we left that magical hotel. It was a bit like a movie in itself, you know, this really cool old romantic hotel with the, the speakeasy and everything that was in it. So say hi to each other. You guys haven't, have you guys seen each other since 
we've shot? No, no, communicated on 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 uh, on Instagram, but that's yeah. about yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, our love had to take a little break. Now they play little star-crossed lovers in the movie. You know, I tried to woo Scott away, but he just was outside of me. He's not young enough for me, I think is the thing, right? <laughs> All right, well, I would like to bring on at this moment a woman who brought us all together. This is my second feature film with her. She is an amazing writer, director, producer. Uh, between her and her husband, just, I think you guys both mentioned the crew. I've done hundreds of projects, and there's something about the crew and the way they have their ability on a set. My first film with them is called How to Train Your Husband. And got to tell you, that was a, a title that I live up to. <laughs> Miss Sandra Martin, will you join us, please, my darling? I love this, by the way. I'm just having a blast. There she is. Hi, hi. Unmute your microphone for us. How's that? That is perfection. Where are, <laughs> where are you right now? I'm at home. Nice. Up in Kansas. Yes, yes. Well, uh, so three of your cast members are here. We got a couple more popping on. Um, I introduced you as writer, director, producer, superstar between you and your husband, own production company. You guys are amazing. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, I'm going to try and get out of the sun just here a little bit. There you go. I'll get that right camera angle. I'm going to have to teach you a little That's bit. That's right. I don't have my husband here to take care of my lighting for me. Well, I tell you what, he is one of the very best. All right. He so if you want to tell us about who you are. Tell us how you created all this and where you come from. Well, um, I'm from Kansas City, so is Isaac. He's not here today because he's off filming another movie. But um, yeah, we're from Kansas City and this was a project. It wasn't our project to begin with, but we were brought in. Uh, this was actually supposed to film like in Romania. Oh, wow. Yeah, but because it was written like with a, a royalty, you know, like one of those where you go to a castle. But because of COVID, they couldn't travel. And so I got the script given to me and she's like, do you think you could write this to be something you guys can film in town? So it was a fun, uh, fun experience because I got to work with people that I'd worked with before in some of the roles like you, I got to bring you back. Um, and Megan, we had just done a Christmas movie like she mentioned. Um, so yeah, and then got to meet some new people like Scott. Now, most people will never ever get to make a movie. You know, we've all watched them. You guys have made a lot. What is the secret when somebody's got an idea in their head? How do they get it to become a movie? Oh, that's a good question. Um, money. <laughs> that's number one. Yeah, I mean, um, ideas. You got to make sure you have a viable idea that people are going to want to watch. But, um, you know, I mean, we can make movies on a lot of different budgets, I guess, but um, you got to get to the right people. But I'd say, you know, story is always number one. You got to make sure you have a great story to start with. Great right. characters. And, and the ability to cast great actors. So I'm going to go back, continue around the room because Miss Patty Lampert and Maurice and Matt have joined us. So I'm going to start with Patty. Girls go first. Um, Hi! I met Patty in our makeup chairs, and we got <laughs> we got to get naked together. I'm just all I'm going to say right now, <laughs> Patty. Love like, that you remember that. But the ratings go up when I say that. If I said that about Maurice, it'd be a different show. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Matt's going. I want all of you to get naked, but this is not what we're talking about here. I'm a national radio show. I didn't know we were going to tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to tell lots of stories, you guys. I got the entire hour. Patty, my darling, you are a stage actress. Tell us about who you are and what you're up to. All right. Well, I did start on the stage live, um, not with, uh, well, in about nine years old, 10 years old, I started fifth grade and uh, went all the way through theater and college and I loved it. And I wanted so badly to go to Hollywood right after college and told mom and dad that and they said, no. <laughs> so. Um, you know, I went on about my life. I had jobs and I got married and I had three boys. And um, the, the, my, the story that brought me into film, I was actually having coffee. This is my little Panera, cup of Panera coffee story. Uh, I was having a cup of coffee with a donor because I did a lot of volunteer work. 
and she had to flit off somewhere. And I asked, what do you do for a living? And she said, well, actually I'm an actress. I said, how the heck are you an actress in Charlotte, North Carolina? Because that's where I live. I was like, that, how? And she did commercials and things in Atlanta and Richmond. And that's when I realized that, oh my God, I'm like 50 years old. I could do that. I used to think of actresses as being blonde and 24. And I just never thought that this dream could come true. And Sandra and Isaac put a lot of faith in me. And I have to say, um, wow, I mean, they really opened the doors for me. So I've been doing this for a couple of years and I plan to be around for another three or four decades. So it's just you know, begun. You know, it's funny. I ended up in Hollywood. And one of the things when I was in my early thirties, I was told I was too old, not blonde enough, breasts weren't big enough. And as I'm looking at the beautiful cast of this movie, not one of us is blonde uh, and we're all gorgeous in our own way. And I honor Sandra and Isaac uh, and everybody out there who's really fighting for diversity from age to look to whatever it happens to be that great characters and great actors win out at any and every age. So my girl, I honor you. So talented and such a great story. Also just a mom. I mean, you, you told me such great personal behind the scenes stories. And one of the things that I love about being an actress or doing plays is one they call it plays, but is to hang out and meet amazing people. Well, yeah. speaking of that, from Atlanta, the very dark, sexy, and talented, Maurice Johnson has just joined us. Everyone give it up for Mr. Maurice. The not so good guy in the movie, as it turns out. But hey, that's just my take on it. Mighty <laughs> handsome. <laughs> well, come on, Maurice, step up. How's it going, man? I haven't seen you in a while. I know, right? It's just so glad just to just see all of these faces, all of these beautiful faces, and so glad that Sandra's here. And thank you for bringing us from all over the U.S. together. So I think that's the joy of you know going and working on any set. Um, the, everything starts with the story, as you said, Sandra, and then you know it, it, it was beautiful. You know, we had. We had a not so guy, not so good guy in there um, named Brett, and uh, we had this handsome Scott Cooper guy that we have on the screen right here. You know that tried to steal Speak my for girl. Yourself, you know? buddy. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just amazing to see the story unfold. Um, it was my first time filming in the location that we were at, so that was something else. You know, um, just getting uh, connected with that city, and then just meeting all of the castmates. You know, uh, Megan and. Uh, Matt and everybody brought something different to the table. Everybody brought their A game. So it was amazing, you know, just to see it all unfold. Um, it's a beautiful film. And uh, I, I'm just glad I don't want to spoil anything for anybody that hadn't seen it, that hasn't, you know, tuned in yet. But uh, you may may or may not like my character, but it is a beautiful film and a beautiful love story, you know, as well. I think it's just great. And and I do really want to give our hats off to, to Matt and Isaac. This is my second film with them. And not every set that you will come to, one has this many talented actors in one place, but just mm -hmm. amazing human beings. And I think that's part of what I do as a motivational speaker is to set tones and intentions for people so we can all live in an amazing world. If you're just watching, we're not taking any commercial breaks during this broadcast, uh, which is a great thing for my company to do. Thank you. But you do want to go off to Amazon Prime right now and make sure that you check out our movie. It's called Farm to Fork to Love. It is a beautiful romantic comedy uh, set in this time. You know, it's a little bit crisp in the air and you're feeling good and a little food and a little sexy. And oh, and speaking of sexy, did Matt Hudson just join us? <laughs> <laughs> Chef Raphael. Oh, no. Matt, unmute your microphone and come say hi. Well, how nice it is to see everybody again. Wait, wait, Sandra, not, not <laughs> Patty, of course, you'll always be so special to me, all of you. <laughs> so this was a real treat. I like Patty. I was a stage actor. Um, it was starting an amateur, and then I actually got a couple of uh, professional productions. And I did not start screen acting until I was just at the tail end of 50. Wow. So there is no footage of me younger than 50. Oh, is that and it's, it's a privilege to actually be a role model, if you will, for other people that say, oh, I could never start a career in film acting because, you know, and because Hollywood wants and wants and wants, well, no, that's that that, that deck has been reshuffled, you know. So luckily, um, I actually came upon this project because a girlfriend of mine 
up in the northernmost part of Michigan was auditioning and she needed a reader. Oh, funny. And then I, um, I looked at the breakdown and there was, um, uh, there was a part for a French guy. Now I used to live in Germany. I joined the Air Force right out of high school and uh, was stationed in Berlin where I fell in love and accidentally stayed 20 years after I got out. I worked at the airport and I had so many French colleagues and especially this one called Marie Laurent, who was a little bit snappy. She was from Cannes, you know. And I thought, oh, well, all, all I'll do is just like submit a little blurb of me talking like Marie Laurent. <laughs> and <laughs> and it, was a, it was a good framework. Um, I just love the character. I like the secondary thread where you have this. I, I like to compare it to um, Benedict and Bernice except they don't really bicker and argue, but, it, but it's a, a, a little uh, cherry on the icing that this relationship also buds. And of course, you know, being French, I open up new doors for uh, Daniela so that she can find a mysterious side and uh, love. <laughs> so. I think we need to do Farm to Fork to Love part two because Tony needs a love interest too, Sandra. <clears throat> Sandra? <laughs> we need to do Good idea. <laughs> Hey, all right, um, so let's, let's get to the movie, everybody. Um, and I can't, we don't want to give away too much, but let's start with Megan. One of your favorite, because we haven't been together in a year, and I, watching it last night, I was in tears. I was just like remembering all the, just the fun being there. You know, remember this was in a time of COVID, everyone had been locked down and there was this, this fear of, oh wait, we're going to a location and can we all be together? And I just remember like, I remember hugging Maurice in the lobby, thinking, I'm going to hug you, I don't care what you say. All right, so one of your favorite memories of being on location or shooting the film, because as people are going to watch it, they don't really know the behind the scenes, but we do. So Megan, you go first. Well, my favorite shots of the movie, if you watch the movie, are anytime I was in that car. And I also got to drive that car off screen for like 40 minutes. It was amazing. Um, Isaac made sure I got to accelerate onto the interstate. Um, wonderful memories there. I loved being in the sheep field, but I was freezing. Um, but it was just, sort of, it's a beautiful memory. I don't know if my, I don't know if my attitude was beautiful the whole time, <laughs> but I loved it. And, um, there was a night that we found a very open air social area and we all went out and that was, um, not something I had done in all of COVID, but I couldn't have asked for a better crew to begin um, exploring the world again. Uh, it, was, it was just like being in a bubble. You just kind of are like, well, we're gonna take this risk and we're all gonna do it together. And I think nobody got sick, thank God, on either of the movies um, that I shot during the, the summer of COVID when it was still kind of fresh. And all the eating, gosh. <laughs> All the eating. Except for the steak tartare. Couldn't do it. <laughs> Couldn't no, do I, it. You know, it's funny. I was looking at the three of us sitting at the table, how much food we actually consumed. And Sandra, thank you for making it actually really good food. Like it's almost as good as yeah. it looks. <laughs> Scott, um, Scott with one T, which I just think is so sexy. Um, one, of your, one of your favorite memories from shooting? Well, there's two T's. The one is sight, just two, just two bits. <laughs> <laughs> or invisible. <laughs> Favorite thing from shooting, oh man, the food. Anytime there was food, but there's a scene where uh, Megan and I just spent, uh, I don't know if it was half the day, but uh, what were we making, Megan? I've totally forgotten, but it was so much fun. The pasta, right? Yes. We're making pasta. It was so much fun. It was. It's a montage sequence in the film. And uh, watching that is fun. And I think that turned out really, really well. And. And, and experiencing that, doing that on set was just, uh, was so much fun. And I got, I learned how to crack an egg with one hand. I, I had never done that before. And I was so impressed with myself because I'd always seen people do it, you know, on the cooking shows, like, wow, that looks slick. But I tried it at home and I, you know, I would always mess it up, but then I was shown the technique and now I crack an egg with one, with one hand. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, I'm glad I took that away from, from the film. I love that. I'm actually missing you guys so much. Maurice, one of your favorite memories from shooting? Oh my gosh, so many. Um, Megan brought up the nights that we hung out. Yes, that was at the one of one of the top. Um, but just going out when we were in the apple orchards, 
um, and being, you know, I'm, I live in Atlanta right now. And so of course going out, seeing all of the pump, the pumpkin patch, I was just like amazed, like a little kid. And then it was like this farm and we had goats and chicken and all of that stuff. So I think I kind of wandered off in between shots, just being a kid, you know, and just, you know, just absorbing just the backdrop of how beautiful Kansas city was and, um, definitely the eating, but just meeting everyone. Megan is amazing. Um, you know, Scott is amazing. We didn't all get to work our scenes and stuff together, but you know, in between the scenes and getting to know everybody, that's the real treasure that I take away from the film. I love hearing all this. Miss Patty Lambert. Uh, I'd love to ta tag on to Maurice when you said that about being with everybody. Somebody explained that to me this way and, and it, could, it couldn't be a better explanation. When you're on a set like this and maybe we're just lucky that we all really like each other. But when you're on a set like this, it's like you're at summer camp. You're away for two to three weeks and then when you leave, it's like, Oh, there's a little bit of depression afterwards and it's just a, a real death it was we were so close and just truly enjoyed each other and everybody loved working um i want to really say kudos to sandra and isaac and the crew everybody did everything they were supposed to do masked um <laughs> so masked that when we went out that night I lost a gold hoop earring, which was really upsetting because they're taking the mask off to drink something and putting it back on. And anyway, um, so that was a fun night, but I did come back with one less earring. Uh, and I would say that uh, Maxie's not on here. Maxie and I was, she was my partner um, in my work and the, and with Daniela Phillips. But I do remember we were able to finish maybe one night at like five or something a little early. And Megan and Maurice, they both had a scene. And I think they might've been like, they were fighting or something. It was some kind of scene that they were doing, but we want, we loved it so much. We had all these friends that we wanted to go and watch. Instead of like going back to our hotel room and relaxing, we ran around the corner and got a little bottle of wine and sat in the back and just watched you guys. A couple. We just couldn't get enough. <laughs> oh, it's, funny. it's funny you say that. I actually, I, I think I took one of your jackets home I think I bought it from the set and I wore it just recently. I'm like, and I'm watching the show going, oh my God, it, do, it looks so much better on her. I didn't know. No, that. the blouse, <laughs> you that blouse I wanted. You took the cream blouse. If you want to borrow it, I have it anytime that you want. Okay. <laughs> and then Matt, I think you took the underwear that I was, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> he likes being Megan, tall. Megan, did you blab? Yeah. So much fun. Matt, one of your favorite moments, Matt. You were just—you had such a joy on set. It was just so much fun watching you. I actually, at some point, thought you were French. What's one of your favorite memories from shooting? Well, you know, being um, you know an actor that just started out in 200, 200 but two thousand fourteen. <laughs> um, yes, I'm that old. I was born in in the year fifty six, uh, eighty. Um, Nineteen fifty six. Yeah, no, no, 56. <laughs> just a little bit younger than Jesus. I was just so thrilled to be back in a setting with so much professionalism. We didn't sit around for hours while the producer, director, camera people were waiting to set up their shots. They were very precise. Want this light here, let's film it like this. We're going to go mid, I mean, every single setting sits the actors so talented and well prepared um i was a little spoiled i came right out of the gates and got a part in a corridor vigil corridor digital movie with uh, uh nico perger and sam gorski uh, they ha uh, have this uh television show where they do like video game stuff so then to go for four years of independent venues, like, oh, you know, that's that's not how it works. You know, you get your shot, you move on, you get your shot, move on. And then to return back to that environment, incredible. Also the reception and, and how well everything was planned. I mean, literally it was an elevator ride down to work, right, Scott? You know, that's like, that's a dream. You get up, you get freshened up, you go, you go two rooms down, get your makeup, and then you're at work uh, two floors uh, later. So it just, just blew me away. And um, like I said, I learned so much from watching you, Patty, Megan, Scott, the one scene that Maurice and I had, uh, just watching you work and watching you be 
these people that you were portraying and it and uh, you have no idea how much I got from that you know and uh, of course my favorite uh, moment in the, in the movie where he, he says uh, well I, I I can't agree with you and I am French <laughs> that just that makes me bust up every single time you'll have to watch the movie to know what it's about but that is just that is my favorite moment it's like and then eating um Megan's dish it was a very thick stew <laughs> and we did take after take after take and I'm like being a trooper eating this very very thick gravy <laughs> you ate all of my leftover steak tartare you just <laughs> You just were downing that baby. Hey, I, I took <laughs> one for the team. Yeah, steak tartare is raw meat, by the way, if, if anybody's not familiar with it. Uh, so I, I can check that off my bucket list and never have to uh, worry about eating that again. Yuck. So, so, Sandra, we are, we are all, so Sandra, we are all your little puppets. You put this entire cast together. Number one, it must be fun to see it all again. Um, when you watch the film, what do you think? Oh, I think you guys did an amazing job. And I think I did an amazing job casting. <laughs> Would you agree? Well, I, 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 you know, and kudos because I, I to what Maurice and, 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 and Matt said, I've been on lots of movie sets. Very rarely does it work that smoothly, that professionally. You always know what you want, have great attitudes. I think that's the thing that, while I was so excited to get you guys back together as well, you created an environment of, of summer camp of literally getting on the elevator, coming down to this beautiful environment and having a blast. And as I watch the film, I think that level of joy just shows. So are you very happy with the finished product? Oh, really happy, yeah. And it was, it was a great environment. I mean, you don't get that very often where most of the location is in one place. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. I think it it gave us like a, and we were eating in one place. It kind of gave us a, it's a relaxed feeling. So like in the middle of having COVID and all that worry, we kind of like, we're kind of sequestered, I would say, together, no, I, right? What's one of your favorite memories? Uh, well, one thing that I loved is just like the location. So we used that hotel, the Phillips Hotel. We used it like every single place. But do you remember this? Did you get to go down in the speakeasy Forbes? Oh, yes. Wasn't it? it was beautiful. And just to think of the history, that's what I love about that hotel is the history that's there. And that's, you know, I'm proud of being from Kansas City and the history that we have. So I like to show it off. So now um, looking at us, I'm thinking I see a murder mystery with all of us back in the hotel. Oh. Did we it? have a lot of murder mystery. Yes, let's do yes. it. You know, this is on, maybe only murders in the hotel. What do you think? Oh, I want to be <laughs> Professor Peacock. <laughs> right, so we all you know i think everyone on this stage on this platform is actually a professional working actor that's not something you get a lot um i grew up as an actress that's what i did my entire life uh until when i had babies i had a little shift not that i'm back now um but what is it that you love about the craft there's a lot of rejection there's not necessarily a lot of work if you don't get to be the the sandra bullock julia roberts george clooney you know you're not always working megan what do you love about being an actress um i really love having fun with the crews i feel like when I first started acting, it was like, that's a different world. I'm, I'm an actress and I'm being shot right now. And that's what's important. And as I've been with it for almost a decade now, I've realized that that attitude is terrible. And um, I'm really just a part of the crew and crews are typically very funny, um, goofy people who are willing to do this crazy life of being on set so often with lots of characters. Um, I mean, these crews in particular, it's some of the most I've ever laughed in my, la in my life. So I really like to be able to be of service in that way. Just think of be someone who's trying to create something and acknowledge that every single person there is equally important. Um, so I really like that. And I like the, the pressure that I get to put on myself to be honest um, through portraying something because that's always a challenge. You're, you're someone who's managed to live your dreams between blogging and writing. So, so many people out there right now are very frustrated. What advice would you give them about pursuing their dreams? 
Number one, do it. Just do it at all costs. Um, don't listen to all the, the messaging that's put on us as soon as we start school and sometimes even before that you have to live life a certain way because you just don't. You can kind of do your own thing and each, each new thing each different thing or new thing, it's just a stepping stone to a really long story that is going to be your own original story. So just keep taking steps because you don't want to die with regrets. That's kind of my, I don't want to die with regrets. Life is too short. I love that. Scott, what do you love about acting? Well, spot on, Megan. Thanks for saying that. I think everyone needs to hear that I, because fear can get the better of us, you know, and we just have got to do there's so many times we hold back on things we really want to do. Just do it. So, so yeah, Megan, thanks for that. And also on what Megan said, you know, as much as it is the script and immersing yourself in a character, it's who you're working with. And I felt like I would, this was a family. I, it was, it was so easy working on, on this film. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone was just so professional and just so, so giving and and uh it was just a, a wonderful healthy environment you know and that that helps so much i mean you can have challenges with the character in the script but when everything else is working that's that's the most important thing for me you're living very very far from home how do you always stay so positive well um you know, I chat to my parents every day. You know, if it's if it's not a phone call, it's it's on um, a WhatsApp every single day. My mom and dad, we we, my mom and I will talk about you know shows we're watching, and my my, my dad will talk about sports. Um, you get used to it. I'm used to. It. I'm going back in December to to visit. I like to go back every December because Christmas times, uh, very important. But I realize that this is my home now. It took me a while to settle, but. Um, this is, this is in LA, this is my home. And my family's always there, you know? So they're very supportive of, 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 my, of my life here and my dreams. So you've just got to adapt, you know? Life is what it is, but you've just, you've got to keep moving, moving forward. So this is the icing on the cake where the cast gets to celebrate something that we've all done together. But life of an actor is not very easy. You've got a lot of competition out there in Hollywood. Uh, how do you, what, what advice would you give to somebody about pursuing their dreams? When it gets tough. When it gets tough. Same as what Megan says, just do it. Just keep going because life is not perfect. I mean, as an actor, I know there's more rejection. There's more no's than yeses. I'm, I'm so used to it now. It's like, yeah, okay. I was expecting that, you know? So, but it doesn't mean you've got to keep expecting what's not going to work in the negative. It, you've just got to have, you've got to keep that positive mindset and keep the bigger picture in mind. Always keep the bigger picture in mind. Have a list, know what your five-year plan is, know what your ultimate dreams are. And for me, it's about thinking big. And I encourage everyone to think big, always. Well, thinking big, uh, big Maurice's career is continuing to explode. I see you in a bunch of projects. Um, what do you love about acting? I love the different characters. Like Megan said, we're able to kind of escape our own personal selves and become some somebody else, right? Um, just like I was a butthole. I'm not a butthole in real life, of course. So <laughs> and I had no, fun least. playing that, right? But, you know, sometimes um, I just love so many different things. I do stunt driving, commercials, you know, acting. And as Scott alluded to, you know, we get so many no's. Find your lane and something else could jump off for you, right? And so, um, it, it, you know, it just that's our thing, just keeping us ourselves busy. And we're like each other supports group sometimes, I think, you know, we help each other through it because we're all going through the same thing. So I think our, um, as long as we keep our circle, you know, here amongst working actors and those that just refuse to lose, they refuse to, to accept the rejections and they want to keep on pushing. Um, I think that's what's big. And, and I'm going to give my hats off to Patty, to Matt. Um, I'm going to segue into something else, not segue, but uh, just give you guys your kudos. I've received personal comments about your characters, and this is pat on the back to Sandra. I think a lot of people tuned in looking at my character and Scott and Megan's character. They didn't think about the love story that budded, and it was an older love story. So I've had middle-aged to older people that reached out to me and said they'd never see that in, you know, in a movie. 
And I had to see it because I didn't witness a lot of those scenes, but seeing it as, you know, uh, you know, just viewing the, the, um, the film, I was like, wow, it was, you know, it was just amazing. And I had no idea, of course, you know, reading the script, but seeing it conveyed on and, and portrayed on screen, you guys definitely uh, were, were the favorites from a lot of the comments that I've actually personally received. So kudos to you, kudos to you, Sam. Oh, and I love hearing that. And, and kudos to Sandra thinking a little bit older might be better because yes, we all, it's nice that you youngins get to do this, but you know, we all, yeah. I know that. <laughs> Hey Maurice, you know, it's funny because a lot of people just watch a movie and they put all of us up on a pedestal. Oh, you're there. We all as working actors know the behind the scenes. Um, what advice would you give to a young boy who's looking at you going, I want to do what he does? Wow. I would tell them definitely to cultivate. This is coming from an athlete, played college ball. Um, I wish after college I would have moved to L.A. And so I would I would I would tell them not just to do the safe thing, because that's what I did. Like uh, Megan said, uh, we are taught to go off to college, get a job, get in a certain company and get the benefits and all of that good stuff, have the wife and kids, and that's happily ever after. But we're still searching. And I tell kids when I talk to them, I mentor a lot of boys um, all over with, um, in L.A., um, Georgia, you know, as well. I tell them, figure out what it is that they love and figure out how to help how to get an income you know from that and they will always be happy because i was plugged in in the corporate world in the corporate sector made a lot of money was never happy and i was always searching then i found in well i found i went back to my first love which was acting and that's what did it for me and that's why i'm smiling now <laughs> i love it i'm telling you something this is the this is the best part of it patty um i what is it that you love so much about being an actress stop crying I, yeah, you're not <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you got me, Maurice, when you said you were always searching, right? Mm -hmm. is it, um, this isn't live, is it? I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, my girl, you got very <laughs> well, so what I would say, though, I just Maurice, it's true about if you're if you're searching and if you aren't doing what you want to do, you will continue to search. Where I am right now at my age in my life, I call this my third chapter, okay? First chapter is growing up, going to college, doing some work. Second chapter is if, you're, if you get married, married kids. Now my, my third son went off to college in the fall. So he's an empty nester. This is my third chapter, okay? I have never been happier in all my life because of that searching you're talking about, Maurice, I don't have to search anymore. And I, when you're an actor, Forbes, you're asking, you know, what's, what's fun about acting. When you're an actor, you have to act. And that's what I found out is that I loved it so much growing up and I didn't realize how much I missed it until 30 years later. And I, uh, I'm here now and I, you know, I would tell people, and it's so cliche, I know, don't give up, never give up, it's never too late. It is never too late, never too late to do what you want to do, never. So I would, I would just encourage people to, if, you've, if you're 65 years old, Come on, go follow that dream, write that book. I mean, just act, do whatever it is, paint. Because it's helping us, it helps our brains as well. And we all know that the further we, the longer we live, the, you know, and the more that we do to stretch our brains and learn, the longer we live. So I'm can glad. You guys, can you guys just feel like the love among this cast? We've not seen each other in a year. Sandra, you did something really special. You actually just put together a family that I'm just loving. And I'm not kidding about, we need the dessert movie now. You know, the, the, <laughs> I, the little cherry, cherry on top, the part two, because we are so all ready to do this. Mr. Mr. Matt, um, I love your story. And it's funny, Maurice, that you actually pointed out an older love story. Matt, the fact that you didn't start till acting till after 50. What a great theme for this entire afternoon to follow your gifts, follow your heart, do what you love, because what else is there? I just lost one of my best friends to COVID, one of my publishers on my book. You are not promised tomorrow. So to embrace today seems to be that message. And I am just loving this. Matt, you obviously love acting, both stage and screen. Why? Well, I've always been an actor, 
Except back in what, what, what school, they didn't call it that. They called it class clown. That's what, <laughs> what does it mean for you to be an actor? I have this rare gift, and I've only had this revelation recently. But when you transition as a screen actor, because I've been on stage since 1997, but when you transition as an actor, you start to turn your performance outward. It, it, it stops being about, look at me, look at me, oh, look at how I feel. And you realize, look at how this story can make you feel. Mm. I tell it honestly. And that is a gift. I can actually slip into someone else's life, make people reflect on their own experiences, change their minds, and change the world. What you know? What a gift! And and it it really uh, is a turning point. And I think. Um, where you realize it is not about getting the audience to look at you. It's about getting the audience to look at themselves. Well, that's an Academy Award winning moment right there. <laughs> I love yeah. Where, um, you know, my, Raphael absolutely fell in love with Daniela. I never saw Patty Lambert when the cameras were rolling. And it was that realism that fueled my character to be very intrigued and uh, interested and he was kind of you know having visions of where this could be going already and I know she did too because I could read it on her face but it was it was just so neat to kind of slip in and and really fulfill your duty to tell the story as honestly as you can and just put yourself aside you know if you have a, a booger on your cheek no your character has a booger on their cheek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we missed you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. You know, but you know, if 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 you you look at your you look at your per, your your performance, you say, "Oh, I was fat," which oh, forty pounds. You know, no, the character was was well fed. He's a chef, you know. So um, you you really separate yourself. And I I am used to now watching myself on screen in the third person. And now watch, he does this, and he says this to her. And you just, if you, the moment you can lose yourself in the performance for the realism and the truth. I, we're gonna have to come back for acting lessons 101 as well. <laughs> but what I will say, advice to anybody starting out, there are a lot of opinions out there. And most of them are, you know, have about as much currency as me standing behind my mechanic telling them, you know, what to, what to look for under the end, engine. I have absolutely no aptitude for it. So you're gonna get a lot of opinions about um, your craft from people who have no idea and could never imagine what it's like to be an actor. So once you find those relationships that really stimulate you, train you, expand your horizon your, your your capacity for envisioning by all means you know groom, groom them because they're very rare and you know it's a matter of chemistry you don't always run into people who you will mesh with and you can't let the ones that you don't drive you nuts because well, you know how many opinions do we hear from people who really have never done it before. There's a lot of things to think about when you're up there giving a performance and a lot of training that, that you have to do that people don't realize. Okay, every he needs a he needs a standing ovation. One of us give it to him. Oh, no. No, no, I mean, but this, these, these, are, these are these yeah, are no, these are things that you well, but you know, you know um, but it's for oh, what do you love have about really made very apparent to me through this experience. Thank you, Patty. Asked, I love that you asked me what I love about acting. I have always, you know what, I do one love the fact that we get to play, to disappear into characters, to expand our minds, to not be part of this realm, whether you get to fall in love with people that you've just met for a short period of time, but also to Sandra, that you get to bring words on a piece of paper to life. Uh, I've been teaching a lot lately to entrepreneurs 
about how they need to take acting classes or improv classes. I studied with Meisner for two years. We learned to listen, not to the words on the paper, but the intention from someone's heart, how you communicate. And I think the medium is amazing. Uh, unfortunately, being an actor for all of us is fraught with as Scott talked about, rejection all over the place. And I don't think you realize that as I'm watching our movie, Farm to Fork to Love It, I Love, you don't see any of that. When you see all of us on stage looking like rock stars, you don't see the rejection, the times we wanted the role that we didn't get. It's a funny thing. Being an actress and acting have nothing to do with each other. Mm -hmm. That moment when they yell action is like free floating through the air and it's just delicious. And I will never want them to yell cut because then it's like, oh, back to reality. <laughs> I know you could work for 18 hours a day, couldn't you? So easily. That's the joy that part. I miss that. Miss Sandra, you are not in front of the camera, at least not on this film, but you are the words. I mean, you hold a lot of different hats. And as a woman, I love you because obviously in our craft, we're not seeing a lot of women step up to be directors and the writers and the, and the, the engine behind this. You also have a great partner and I applaud you for that partnership, watching the two of you work together twice now on professionally has been one of the greatest joys. You've instilled in me the possibility because I've been in Hollywood so long, I've seen a lot of the negativity and the bickering. None of that existed. I swear that hotel was like fairyland. <laughs> yeah. So well, Sandra, what would you say to someone who's got a dream in their heart, wants to do this, forgetting the money and actually professionally getting it made, but what do you love about what you do? There's so many things. Um, at the root of it, I love storytelling. I just love, I feel like a kid that, um, like, do you remember where you're, you're my age, you would know, but remember those big chief tablets or opening up a notebook and it was just like the best feeling. Never ending then, story, right? Where the story so is going. Anytime I get a new script or I start on a new script, it's like this brand new world of possibilities. And so I love writing. I love creating that world, but then when you get to go on set and the actors bring what they do to the story and it's things that you might not have even seen in a character. I mean, that's really, that's, that's like the icing on the top. It's like you said, like um, the actual acting is a small percentage of your life, right? You spend like all this other time and that's how it is for me as I spend like, it's a small percentage of actually the production part of it, the principal of photography. Um, so I, I enjoy all the different elements, honestly. I love that. All right, we only have a couple more minutes left to the show. So let's go back to actually the film so we get our audience very, very excited about watching it. Um, so Megan, when you watch the movie, what's something that just ignited you and go, wow, make sure you don't miss this because it's a, a theme or a, a part of it that you just like, even we're surprised because as actors, we don't even see the whole film. We see our piece of it. Mm -hmm. And there's that moment that I don't think you'll understand as an audience where you're sitting back watching and so Megan, as you're answering this question, do you also, as the lead in this movie, do you watch your performance? Or do you actually watch the characters? Uh, I try to watch everybody but myself. Um, and I try to watch it with a lot of other people who will make fun of me. Um, and I try to watch, I get into the cinematography. I mean, I think that Isaac, Isaac and Sandra both have a very artistic eye. Um, and they make, they make it visually beautiful, which adds so much to movies. It adds so much to anything, but I, I, don't, I think it gets undervalued a lot how much the scenery in this movie, just capturing what they capture, really lifts all of us up so much more. Um, I, I loved to see that, all the shots in Kansas City. I mean, it, who would have thought? You guys really did bring the town to life. All right, you guys, I just got told by my producers, we have five minutes left to close and it's a hard out. So let's keep our answers to a couple of sentences. Scott, you're watching the movie. You see you or or the character and what do you want people to think about when they're watching it? I see it all. It's difficult not to focus on you because uh, let's be honest, when you're looking at a photograph, that's the first thing you look at. Let's all be honest here, you know? Um, but visually beautiful film i love the aerial views of new york and kansas city i found out that isaac is a pilot mm -hmm. and he took all that footage and just visually beautiful beautiful film and 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 megan's right with what sandra and isaac bring just visually every frame is is appealing and uh 
I just, it's just a refreshing, it's just a wholesome, it's just a wholesome feeling watching this film, you know? So, yeah. so Maurice, we might kind of go boo to you, but what do you want people to take away from the movie? I think they're going to love Brit, I, I actually. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> you know, of course, uh, Megan and Scott, you know, talked about how beautiful it is, the colors, you know, I think sometimes when we're acting, we're focused on our scene partners and we don't realize how much stuff is going on behind us, how authentic it looked being inside of, you know, as Chef Raphael is making something or, you know, the, the backdrop and everybody's working in the kitchen and all of the, you know, the beautiful surroundings when we're out uh, in the apple orchards and, 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 and uh, everything on the farm. That was just, you know, beautiful, but it's it's the love story, it's the warmth. You know, I think people are gonna snuggle up um, as it's getting colder, the leaves are changing. I think they're gonna just fall in love and be enchanted by the characters in, in, in such diversity. And so I want to thank Sandra for the diversity that she has in the film, because I think everybody's gonna be able to find themselves or somebody that they know that was on this cast. Agree. And, and I love, I love you guys so much, Miss Patty. You, I would say quickly, yes, the cinematography is phenomenal, as you all said, but I would, I would encourage people watching to look for the nuances. If you look at the, you watch the overall movie, yes, and the stories, but because we were all such tight friends and we became friends, you see these little raised eyebrows or they're just these adorable little nuances on our faces with the with the um, little smirks here and there, and that makes it a, a little bit deeper of a, of a story than what you may see at the surface. That's so I true, I saw a lot of that, Mr. Matt. Of course, the the photography of the food and the table settings really rival one of my favorite films, Babette's Feast. Yes, Denmark eighties. I mean, just breathtaking, mouth watering. So uh, come for the romance, stay for the food. Just gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous um, <laughs> photography, both on a grand scale and, and also uh, the tight shots of them. I agree, you know, Sandra, none of us could have seen what you guys saw. And I will tell you the, the color, the feel, the taste, you actually are in the kitchen. It's spectacular, guys. If you love the Food Network, you are gonna so love here. If you're a foodie, you're gonna love us. Sandra, closing words, you got one minute. Okay, I just want to say you guys have been very nice and kind to Isaac and I, but um, the people that did production design, Maria and Aaron did a phenomenal job to make everything look beautiful. Vanessa made you guys all look perfect, right? All the time. So thank you, Vanessa. And thank you for the people that do the lighting, Ben, and thank you for everybody that's on the crew. Everybody. It's a, such a group effort. So as we come down to the last couple of minutes, my cast, my friends, I'm going to start to cry because I love seeing you guys so much. It was an amazing, very special, very blessed time. Not joking about part two. Um, I invite you, Amazon Prime right now, if you want a heart-touching, amazing story that you will find something to love, or like you said, look at the food, you want farm to fork to love. I'm Forbes Riley. You're watching the Forbes Factor. We talk about health, wealth, and happiness. And I got to tell you, today we did it in style. To my cast, my crew, my friends, I love you guys. Oh, I'm a giant hug. Good for you guys. I know, I know, I know. All right, Mwah. guys, love I'll you see all. you. Bye. Mwah. Thank you so much. See you guys. Bye. All clear. Great job today, everybody. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye. You too. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Bye -bye. We, are, we are still live on Facebook, just so you know. Are we? Oh, yeah, yeah. So yes. they, uh, <laughs> Let's hunting. carry on. <laughs> yeah, but we can carry on for a minute. We don't have to. Who did we just lose? Oh, we, oh, we lost Voice America. Yes. Oh, actually, I want to take a picture now that it's just all of us. Now we can say whatever we want. We're not on camera. I don't have to be the only one to ask questions. So while we're together, I do have an audience out here. of oh, There's almost a million people who will see this at some point. Oh. So, I would love you to real from the heart, anything that you wanted to share, because I'm, now we're not a radio show, but being an actor is challenging. I do love seeing you guys on screen. I thought this was, Sandra watching the film just blew me. I, honestly, I'm watching the film. I love, Matt, what you said. I'm like, this is like freaking ridiculously beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know the neat thing, I mean, just a little cherry on, on the Sunday, that Christmas card oh. from your film family. Yes. Yeah. Isaac and Sandra. Handwritten note. It's it's among my treasures. What? Now. What Christmas card? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> Only I 
hang out with her. You, Daniela, <laughs> you are so shifty sometimes. So just for my audience here, just tell us, what, what, are, you, what are you focused on right now, Miss Megan? What's up next? Oh, goodness. I never know in this industry. I never know. Um, I have one, sometimes I get on, I'm on the news and I, as a tra travel expert, because I wrote that book on travel and love travel. So I have that coming up, but you know, I don't know what else, just auditioning, <laughs> throwing auditions into the black hole of um, this, this career and seeing what happens. Oh, and I'm going to get a camper soon and go hit the road. Ah, um, so fun. It's like fun. Going to yeah. go to the West Coast, Megan? Road going trip. all over, but yes, hitting up Kansas City, going to the West Coast, all of it. When you come down to Tampa, I have a beautiful television studio down here. Big house, spare bedroom. You're always welcome. Ooh, excellent. Thank you. Yes. I, and I and I think that you're amazing. And I loved, I mean, some of the fun, it's funny because I realized how many scenes I didn't get to see shot. And I was like, oh, this was really fun. Oh, Were those so sheep, did you plan the sheep? I See, I wasn't on, I wasn't in, in that. Uh, oh, the sheep was a big deal. That was because hysterical. The that day was... before, the sheep that we thought we had, we lost. <laughs> and we had These to get on the phone. Bad, Isaac had to find a herd of sheep in 24 hours. <laughs> it's like the reindeer in My Sweet I Holiday. I know it. <laughs> that is amazing. Scott, Scott, aside from going all, can you, can you actually get to South Africa during COVID? That's cool. Oh, I was so thankful uh, because South Africa was so, I think it was even stricter than here, you know, and they, I mean, they banned alcohol, they banned cigarettes. I mean, it was a whole nother level and uh, this weren't letting anyone in. And I was so glad I got to go back um, last December, but there was no New Year's Eve. Our president even said live on television, there'll be no New Year's for you. So everyone stayed at home over New Year's Eve, but I'm thankful that I'm going back again in uh, in December, yeah. All right, so next up for you, you sound like you've got a bunch of films. I'm very excited for you. Well, I'm, I'm a producer on this film that we've shot. So I'm a big creative consultant. So it's an editing process. So every day I'm actually looking at the edit. It's, it's just, it's a new experience for me, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I have, that I'm, that I'm a part of, of, of this process. But also going to be shooting a Christmas film, uh, something I've always wanted to do. It's called uh, Christmas in Canal Town. So we'll be shooting that in, in New York State in uh, Sullivan County. Oh, so, okay. uh, great. looking forward to that. You look very happy. You look very good. Um, Mr. Maurice, talk to me. Josh, come in for a second. Yes, I am uh, just so excited just about this film. So we're trying to definitely pump this film up and let everybody see it. Great reviews so far. I also have another film that's on Amazon Prime and about 10 other platforms that'll be coming out at the end of the month. It's called The Cricket Dance. And so we right. want about um, over 15, maybe 20 uh, film festivals. So uh, great reviews, uh, won everything that every film festival that we were in and now we are picked up. So just enjoying, just enjoying this ride, enjoying this process. I love it, Miss Patty. You do look really, you look really happy and very just beautiful. And what a great setting for you. What's up next? I just finished a, a little role in No Vacancy down in Florida, down in Leesburg, um, with um, Sean Young and Dean Kane. So that was kind of cool. Oh, and um, I mean, to be really transparent and honest, I'm I'm right now thinking about an agent. <laughs> I don't have an agent. <laughs> so I've been I, I have dragging, one for you, Patty. Well, I've been dragging my one. feet a little bit because I've I've done this. I mean six films in 18 months and four of them were with Sandra and Isaac. So <laughs> that was amazing. Um, and I've had little things here and there, but I, I know, and I've been told that, you know, it's time for me to get an agent to go to that next level. So let's, um, let's, yeah, DM. let's yeah. DM. Uh, I'm so sorry, uh, y'all. I have a three o'clock appointment and I have to run and I'd love to stay. I would really I like to do it again. I wanted to take a quick moment. I also have to go to, I wanted to introduce you to the love of my life, Mr. Joshua. Joshua. He was not there on set. Flash. Hello. So I was like, I was not provided yeah. with a hottie yeah. for this. Where's, where's my, where's my hug? So I watched Joshua and Forbes the other night. Joshua, you were, hi, I'm Patty Lambert, Joshua. You, you were cooking eggs, and I think bacon. <laughs> and you said, and there were no carbs. It was all good fat, which yes, I'm all over that. And Forbes, your son did a was talking about your pitch, your um, pitch workshop. 
great. Was it's amazing. A- I mean, I knew McKenna and McKenna's amazing, but your son just like that was, how do you get them to love you so much? <laughs> hey, them a lot of money. It's all in how much cash you give them. She's not lying. <laughs> I get it. And you know, of course, you have not met Sandra. Let me see an arm here. Come on, come on. Just, oh. yeah. Don't kid, I'll make you take your shirt off. Megan will not leave. I get <laughs> it's her, yeah, her arm candy. Megan, we love you guys. Um, I do have to run as well. Uh, Matt, stay in touch. Sandra, I have a film to pitch you, so I'm excited to do that because I've got a great idea. Oh, good. Um, and he's making the entire time. It's a funny thing. Him and Scott and Maurice. Just, no, I'm just kidding. All right, I'm not <laughs> going to have a blessing. I got to pitch my thing, though. Did you get your photo, Forbes? I, I, okay, everybody smile really big. Beautiful smiles. Now that Josh is here, too, that's kind of cute. Everybody look really sexy. And I'm not kidding about you guys. Coming down to Tampa, one, two, three. Oh, and I, I have a beautiful Take photo. it again. Take it again, Forbes. I was looking down. <laughs> Okay, now I'm remembering about Patty. This is an interesting conversation. One, two, three. <laughs> Patty, you got to come Love back. Love you all. That's a great idea. Okay. Hi, Thank you oh, so much, Forbes. Yeah, you said it. Nice you, to see you again. I'm very happy. Let's promote That's this. Great to see you guys. Um, but I do have to run. So, guys, I will Bye. love you very much. Mwah. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Bye. 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 Scott. Bye. Patty. See you.